Hello everyone, Jay Whitner here with Space Headlines. We do a quick summary each week of what's going on in space. And today we'll be talking about the second week of December, 2019. Our first item is China and their program to harvest solar energy from space and beam it down to the earth. Their plan is, uh, is fairly specific in nature. There's timetables for what they intend to do and timetables we should be paying attention to. In the early 2020s, 2021 to 2025, they want to do stratospheric power beaming tests. By 2030, they want to have a satellite that can beam one megawatt of solar power down to a rectenna, a receiving antenna on the surface of the Earth. And by 2050, they want to have commercial scale solar power stations in space. Space-based solar power can provide unlimited clean energy for humanity on Earth. And the nation that takes a leading role and is the, the leader in space-based solar power is probably going to be the leader in space overall and is also probably going to be the world's leading economy. So this is something we should all be paying attention to. The NASA administrator held a media event focused on the space launch system with the, uh, the milestone being the completion of the first stage core of the space launch system. He described this as a Christmas present to America. It's certainly a very impressive looking uh, piece of hardware. The, the first stage core, it's over 200 feet tall. But we need to remember that this program is behind schedule and over budget. So we need to keep an eye on how things are proceeding and hopefully things will uh, we'll get back on track. ESA, the European Space Agency, is working on a project that pertains to space debris. They're developing a satellite they call Clear Space One. And the idea here is the satellite would rendezvous with a piece of space debris grab it uh, with its arms, and then both the Clear Space One satellite and the piece of debris would be uh, deorbited, and both items would burn up on re-entry. So this would eliminate uh, one piece of space debris at a time. This uh, Clear Space One spacecraft is scheduled to launch in 2025. So uh, kudos to ESA for, uh, for working on a big problem. Boeing and NASA are at a bit of odds over the space launch system. The deal here is that Boeing is lobbying Congress to put lots of resources to focus on the advanced version of the space launch system, uh, while NASA wants them to finish the program that has been uh, delayed and has had a lot of problems. They want them to finish the base version. So, NASA, in effect, thinks that focusing on the enhanced version will delay everything, will make the 2024 goal of a, a human lunar return uh, impossible. Uh, so we're at a little bit of an impasse between uh, Boeing's lobbying forces and NASA's role in the government. Hopefully, uh, the contractor will provide uh, what NASA needs to accomplish the objective. A bit of sad news uh, this week. Vector and Garvey spacecraft have both filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings. There is a uh, uh, various backstory to this, but the core appears to be that Sequoia withdrew their financial support of the effort and that caused uh, everything to collapse. It does appear that Lockheed Martin is going to buy a lot of the uh, the assets and technologies that have been developed by Vector and Garvey. And one of the, the key pieces appears to be a satellite program called Galactic Sky that Lockheed Martin would be um, the new owner of. Our last item for the week is Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab has a, a launcher focused on small payloads called the Electron. They've had uh, roughly 10 launches so far, I believe. Uh, but they've all taken place, as I understand it, from New Zealand. So the news is, is the Rocket Lab is opening up a launch site right here in the United States, which is, which is great. This is going to be at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport. This is at Wallops Island in Virginia. 
Apparently, the, the new launch pad is very similar to their facilities in New Zealand, which uh, obviously makes sense. The first customer for a U.S. launch from the facility is going to be the U.S. Air Force. And kudos to Rocket Lab for coming a long way in a short amount of time. And welcome back to the U.S. That's it for Space Headlines, covering the second week of December. Hope you enjoyed our show. Check back with us in a week or so, and we'll be talking about what's going on in the third week of December. We'll see you then.